the meaning behind the name, the story behind the project. Let's get it all. Uh, I guess it to be simple was that I always just wanted to do shit that felt good and that no one else wanted to do, basically. That like, quite brilliant started with just making weird stuff that I thought was good and no one else did. And then two years later, everyone thought it was good. It was like, oh, right, shit. Like, same with Dr. P, we just kind of, uh, MO was always like, has anyone else done this? No. Is this weird as fuck? Yes. Awesome, let's put it out. Like, that's kind of how it started. And then, yeah. And then, as the scene has, like, progressed, the stuff that was weird five years ago is now, like, normal. Right. It's just kind of, yeah. So now I'm in the process of switching out and making weird stuff again. How do you go about finding new talent? Like, where do you look? Um, circus is kind of like a, like a bunch of misfits, really. We've always been the like, sort of the group in the industry that doesn't quite fit anywhere else. So we're always looking for artists that you know have their own sort of their own complete character. And well, we like to, uh, yeah, sort of basically create a place where they can be that character. So it's like like Discord, for instance, have this just a cool thing going on where it's just, there's no one else quite like it. And I really love signing acts like that where we can be like, cool, you're great, don't sign to another label who may tell you to maybe do this and maybe do that, which can happen. It's like, if you want to be you, if you're happy being you, then come with us and continue to be you for as long as you can, basically. But that's always been our vibe. So yeah, we're looking for new artists, we're looking for people who want to do their thing, basically, yeah, to be left alone to do it. That's, yeah. Well, you're at the iconic legendary Webster Hall in New York City. Yeah. You've played around the world, festivals, yeah. intimate vibes. Yeah. Yeah. We're interviewing in a bathroom, so what has been your craziest performance to date? Uh, so this, well this year, so it sticks in my memory, is EDC Las Vegas, that was to like 60,000 people. And it felt like a club show. Like normally there's a difference between festivals where it's just like huge open air places where it's like more hands in the air kind of vibe than club shows where it's just sweaty, there's 150 people there. EDC Vegas felt like a club show, but it was big and like, great. Right, so yeah, awesome. And that was yeah, that was special. I really enjoyed that one. So do you prefer the festival vibe or the more intimate crowd? It's like um it's like apples and pears really, you know, like apples and I like pears it's the different times, so yeah. Yeah, they all have their own, yeah, individual kind of character. So, uh, what are the top five songs on your iPod that you listen to on a daily basis? Um, don't really listen to music that much at the moment. It's got been so busy writing, so it's mostly my music that I've been listening to. So I can, it's like new stuff that I write is what I to listen to. So, when I listen to it over and over again, you start getting a good feel for it and working out what's wrong with it. So there's a new track that I've done with the Yellow Claw. There's a new track I'm working on with Snails. There's three new songs that I'm working on with Dr. P. There's a new track I'm working on with Michelle Montano. There's a remix I've done with Faithless. And yeah, all that stuff over the past all that month or so. That's kind of what I'm listening to and then working on. <laughs> it's nice to listen to something and have the ability to change it. You're like, oh, I really like this bit. Cool, I can actually change that. Yeah, that's fine. Now I know the album's out, I know the remix EP just came out, but of any of those upcoming releases, are we going to hear any of them this year? Uh, we hear them tonight. That's always a plus. Yeah, I play, <laughs> I play as soon as something's ready to play, I play it on set this week. But yeah, I think, I don't think anything else is coming out, we're still rolling on the album. Like, yeah, the album's kind of what this is all about. Do you have any plans on a remix EP for any other of the tracks? Mm. Well, the next single that we're looking at is Emotional with Matthew Como. Okay. So I've got some remixes coming in for that one, which is yeah, really cool. That's like, yeah, that's like the track that felt so special when we wrote it. We did it, it was happening so quickly. And then now the record's out, it seems to be, it's nice to put a record out and then just be able to, rather than choosing a single to try and promote the record, I was just like choosing a single that means the most to you. So now the record's out, it's like we can do emotional, and then put that out, so that's the next thing. So a uh, little, uh, would you rather? Would you rather have the emotional vocal tunes or like the tunes with just like samples that try to hype up the crowd? Like the put your hands up type shit? Um, or do you want a song like with nice vocals that strike a, an emotion? One of both. Why not both? Yeah. That's, why not have all of it? Yeah, so at the same time, yeah, it's kind of... I don't think you need to choose these days. You don't need to choose 
festival, or club show, house or dubstep, hands in the air or like getting down to, to have it all. Like we have the capability to explore so much stuff now that yeah, I don't think you need to pin down one thing. Well, not that this is a choice, because this is a preference question now. Yeah. Do you prefer remixes or originals in terms uh, of creating them? Creating a remix is always fun, just because you've got, yeah, there's already a song there. Like, what original, you've got silence. You're like, okay, I need to make a song out of nothing. So it's always a bit more daunting. Whereas remixes, you're kind of given, like, oh, here's some stuff, and I'm over it. So remixes always come out more, yeah, just like, they come from different directions. Whereas the original is a bit more of the long slog, where I was writing loads of stuff. Now, I know you're busy touring, so when you're not touring, you're not working on an album or anything, what's the average day for you like? Um, I guess eating food, I'd like to, um, I'd like to smoke meat. I've got like a smoker, I like other uh, so I'll smoke some meat, cook up some dinner, drink some whiskey, and then play online video games with my friends. Which video game? Oh, so at the minute I've been playing Daisy with all my mates and Rocket League as well. Yeah, so yeah, it's good fun. So, uh, how do you feel about the growth of EDM, specifically dubstep, and where do you yeah. see it going? Uh, I obviously feel quite good about it. It's like, yeah, it's the music, like EDM, is this another tag I think that just encapsulates big energy music like when I was growing up it was the stuff I was always really into like Prodigy this is kind of like really visceral fuck I feel awesome when I listen to it and then Dubstep had that when I heard that I was always into drum and bass and Dubstep was like this feels like punk it feels like we can, we're doing our own thing we don't give a fuck about anything else and then yeah that has got so huge that it kind of I feel like it's got lost a little bit because it's so big and everyone's like, oh, we know what we're doing now. And it felt less punk for a little while, but I feel like when everyone's like talking about dubstep dying, that was the day that dubstep came back to life. Because it's sort of like dubstep as a core, the punk thing, it was never meant to be huge. It's never meant to be something that everyone knew how to do. It was more of just like this concept of do whatever the fuck you want. You can do whatever you want. No one, no one cares. Like, it's not big enough, radio aren't playing it. No one cares about it, so do whatever the fuck you want. Make the sounds that you want to make, do all sorts of weird grooves, and then, and that is the creative process. Then when it got big, it's like, oh, you kind of have to do this, and you might have to do that. And then when it was like, oh, dubstep's over, all of us dubstep guys who've been doing it, then was like, fucking sweet, <laughs> I can just fucking do whatever I want again now. Which is like, I feel like that is a wave in electronic music as a thing. It's not just dubstep, but it's all styles, it's like, the growth is amazing because it brings more attention to it and then more producers kind of get into it. And then, yeah, then it flips to people still where they want, which is what I'm all about. Now, we've seen some uh, trends over the past few years from Big Room to Trap to the Deep House. What do you think the next trend in music will be? Um, I don't know. Who knows? Do you know? I mean, hopefully you can make the new trend. That would be great. Yeah, I mean, it's like, what's the, for me as well, what's the point in trying to work it out? Just do your thing, enjoy the moment now, and just, yeah, do whatever you think is good. And then that could be the next big thing, it might not be. Like, who knows, there's no point wasting your time trying to work it out, just try and enjoy what you're doing at the minute, I think. So, yeah. And lastly, if you could have any superpower, yeah, what would it be? Flying? How come? That would be fucking awesome, right? Yeah. Big flying, being able to yeah, get anywhere, sort of soar around. I think that'd be quite good. I like your answers. You get a second superpower. What would it be? A second superpower. Um, I was about to say teleportation. I think I've got a bit of a travel thing going on. <laughs> but it's like, yeah, I spend too much time in airports. So <laughs> the ability to get somewhere really quickly would be quite good. Perfect. But, yeah. Thank you very much. Can't wait to go tonight.